Middle seat, we have Blue Moon from Ross Miriam. He's playing against Affinity. That actually is a tougher matchup for the Blue Moon deck. Blood Moons don't really matter. Those cryptic commands, a little slow. Yeah. In standard seat, we have a blue-black control mirror between Felicetti and Decandio. I think the biggest thing is that the question is how many Electrolyze does Ross Miriam have in that middle seat? That's going to be his most important card. They did get Decandio to play a stock deck. That's a plus. Yeah. <laughs> Though uh, he has been known to build his own standard decks and be fine. But blue-black control mirror, that should be fun. He's got some weird cards in it already. <laughs> Second of the list. I believe that. All right. But anyway, we are on Legacy. Tannen winning the die roll and starting turn one. Fetchland into Deathrite Shaman. I am just really taken aback by these Miri's Guiles and this Miracles deck. It's, it's four color Miracles here. You're going to see some access to red mana, some cyborg red blasts. But yeah, I, I want to see how these Guiles play out. Because uh, historically, this card is seen playing exactly Enchantress and had the effect of look at all the three cards you're going to draw this turn because yeah. you just draw them off of Enchantress. So turn one, Daniel tries to Swords to Plowshares away the Deathrite Shaman. Tannen's willing to pick up that one land to daze it, however. He'll on tap with the one, two. Yeah, the, the thing about the blue-white deck is it does not have very many windows where it has to play in the days. Get it while it's good. I like that yeah. daze. Delver of Secrets from Tannen, and Deathrite Shaman will make another mana to commit farther. And that's going to be in Ponder. I'm trying to set up that Delver of Secrets. Mm -hmm. And this is where you're trying to dodge the Terminus. Yes. Though right now it would have to be a miracle, natural off the top. Miller has not had the opportunity to set up the top of the library. What a miracle it would be. Just, <laughs> hey, white mana, Terminus, let's do this. Right. It's too easy. One of the things I like about the new Miracles deck is how they also can sometimes Miracle in the opponent's turn. Say, for example, Daniel plays Portent. Yep. That's pretty nice play. Here's another weird thing. Daniel has a 2-2 two -two Portent Ponder split. Shaving some of those to make You're room for these Miri's Guiles. You're cutting Ponders for Miri's Guiles. Oh, that, that's the that's problem so, that I have. That's so weird. All right, I'm going to go on a limb here, limb here and say that Ponder is dramatically more powerful than Miri's Guile. Well, I don't know about the first one. Miri's Guile, is it, is it legend? It's legendary? I don't, I, don't it, I, I don't believe so. I, I don't Miri know. has many Guiles. Yeah, Miri is a very guile character. Rats, missed the Miracle Trigger. No Terminus just yet. Yeah, fetch land and passes, does Daniel Miller. Tannen does not flip Del Delver of Secrets does not transform the card, actually. Yeah, Delver is not big on transforming. You know, inevitably it does happen. Attack for Tannen. I was just swinging for one. That's right, Shaman. Should be able to do more damage just activating here. Yeah, going to be no shortage of cards and graveyards for that one. Tannen, happy with his two threats, will make a Volcanic Island and pass. And there's the Terminus. It's a turn late, but still good. Yeah, Tannen has two copies of Spell Pierce in the main deck, but it looks like he doesn't have them. No, nope, both creatures ship to the bottom of the library, and a great draw for Daniel Miller. And he'll just make a land and pass. Clean things up at a very healthy 17. Yep. And has at least one more land in the holdings. And this is where the game can start to slip away from you. He has not done enough damage for having already been two for one by a sweeper effect. Yeah, Daniel had a Jace on the way, and Tan's going to play defense against that for right now. He wastelands away the Volcanic Island and then makes a replacement Delver of Secrets. So all in all, a pretty good turn for Tannen. Yeah. Back on the battlefield, controlling the mana a little bit. Daniel stuck, looks like, with an Entreat the Angels in his hand. Kind of the most important card for Grixis Delver in the matchup is setting up True Name Nemesis because they can't hit it with Swords to Plowshares. Then you're more comfortable fighting over things like Brainstorm, fighting over things like Terminus because your threat can only be answered by a very small subset of cards. That's right, I was wondering about that Entreat. I feel this. Daniel registered his one of Entreat in the Creature column. Sure. I was looking for it in Sorceries. It's very, it wasn't there. very, very clever. It's not a creature. It makes creatures. C correct. It, like, like you, you, you get it. You get it. Daze is going to transform this Delver of Secrets. Daniel deciding if he wants to maybe play something before that Daze is drawn. He does. He'll try to predict. Is this a true predictor? Oh, 
A little surprising that he's concerned about the days. I guess the biggest thing is that he knows this card. Yeah, he just so you wants may as well get your draw two while you can. Second two for one executed there for Miller. First the Terminus, second the Predict. I like how Predict has seen a lot of play. I mean, you're looking for two card advantage at two mana. Yeah. It works. So Insectile Aberration for Tan will swing. That Daniel drops to 13. How do you like this, though? Predict Miri's Guile? What a combination. <laughs> it's just too much card advantage. What are you going to do with all that? Notably absent from the creature column. I'm not seeing any Snapcaster Mages available no, and here. And Tan's keeping, playing good defense on that Jace, too. He wastelands away a Tundra and makes a Deathrite Shaman. Daniel still a ways off that Jace. Once again, he needs to find Terminus. Yep. Five damage a turn is what he's staring down at. Yep. Three copies of Terminus in the main deck. There's also one Supreme Verdict. A search for Ascanta from Daniel Miller. Two copies of that one. That's actually a reasonable interaction with Miri's Guile, to be fair. Yeah, anything that, like, that repeatedly lets you reset the top of the deck. Mm -hmm. So go back over to Tan. He will attack Daniel down to 10. Giant Daniel's hand Jung, got looks a couple neat. Jaces now. So he actually does have Snapcast range. Everything's just in a weirdo column. Oh, it's an instant. He has Flash, right? Yeah. There's this, one in his hand. This deck list is extremely clever. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these fun jokes. Snapcaster's an instant, but in Treat the Angels, that's a creature. So Daniel fetching down to nine. He's at a virtual seven from that death right shaman. Yep. Though seven is still above two lightning bolts, which is usually a fairly comfortable range when you stabilize. One thing about this build, you have all these dual lands. Generally gonna do a little bit more fetching than the blue white build. Search for Ascanta puts counter spell into the graveyard and transforms. So that'll actually ramp Daniel up nicely here. You can start casting these Jaces. Yeah, that's a lot of mana he's casting Jace into. I'm st I'd still be concerned about that one. Yeah. It's not as good of an answer to Insectile Aberration as Swords to Plowshares, but it does something anyway. And here is Jace the Mind Sculptor. Four mana, leaving up Tundra. Playing around days. And he will return Insectile Aberration back to Tannin's hand. Death Rite Shaman deals two. Remember, Death Rite Shaman is loss of life. You can't redirect that to Jace. But you can put Daniel down to seven. Tannin picked up a Lightning Bolt. Interesting question as to what to do with that. You can deal Ooh, with the Jace yeah. immediately, or you can try to close the game. Do you bolt Jace or do you bolt Daniel? Oh, he has Forked Bolt too? I like the aggressive line. I like just trying to go for life. I guess the Forked Bolt's a much more reasonable answer to Jace, though. Yeah, Forked Bolt shoots down the Planeswalker. And he has a choice now of Gurmag Angler or Delver. He'll make Gurmag Angler, leave up mana for Deathrite Shaman, and pass. So if he survives with Deathrite Shaman, he has lethal. I like the management here of Delver over Angler. First of all, it's the creature that Miller knows about. So yeah. you might force some action with the creature that Miller's not aware of. The other thing is your creatures are already kind of lethal with the combination of flipped Delver plus you Deathrite Shaman. You don't need anything bigger. Right. Committing the creature that after the Shaman activation is going to be lethal on its own, it makes sense to sandbag that one. Right. He, Daniel draws unexpectedly absent, but... Now he goes down to five on end step. It'll be an untapped down to three, and that makes the bolt lethal. Tannen may have him here. So this is a good spot for unexpectedly absent because you put the shaman on top. It won't be able to activate next turn, and the delver won't flip. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so unexpectedly absent, X equals zero. Shaman's on top. Delver won't flip. Daniel will go to four. He'll stay alive, but ooh, it's pretty... This is a... It's still a dicey spot. Tense spot. I like the way you played it. And this is neat. Okay, Daniel says, let the Delver trigger resolve. Okay, now that it's resolved, predict you naming Deathrite Shaman. That was neat. Yeah. Pulling ahead on cards still. Though he has picked up his Entreat the Angels. He would have preferred to have miracled that. Yeah, that's been around for a while. He goes down to four. He's going to have to get that into his deck eventually, I suppose. Yeah. And we see Brainstorm end step. Yeah, that does that. That'll, yes, that'll do that. Uh, Tannen Ooh, can daze here. I like that daze. 
there's too much mana in play for that daze to reasonably convert anywhere else. Yeah, Tannen agrees. Let's do it. He goes ahead and dazes the brainstorm. And you know that Miracles isn't going to daze back or anything. Mm -hmm. And you also can be relatively certain that if Miller brainstorms a miracle, say the Entreat the Angels to the top, he's not going to commit into a daze. He's not going to just tap all of his mana. Yeah. You actually were okay even playing around Force of Will there. If he went to three, Dan had quite the answer. Yeah. How about lethal? In Daniel's spot, do you assume that Tannen's good for one lightning bolt here? Yeah, you really want to float above three. Sixth land for Daniel Miller. Outside of setting up that entreaty, he doesn't have the closing speed to just disregard the fact that Lightning Bolt exists. Counterbalance in play. There's a strong argument for Tannen responding to this with the Lightning Bolt. Yeah, I like that a lot. The top of the deck is blind, though. Even still, though, I kind of want to respond to that. Looks like Tannen let it go, though. Snapcaster Mage, Daniel Miller. Targets unexpectedly absent and absence the Delver. I was a little surprised about that, but I guess that sets up things to be just fine for right now. Well, it means the Delver is definitely not connecting this turn. Yeah, it might even be four. countered on the way down. And blind flip. Does he hit? No, but he finds Terminus. That, that works. Yeah. He'll cast that. I assume that he'll be miracling that. Do you bolt Daniel upstairs right now while, there's not, while you know there's a six on top? Tannen passed in the previous window, and now he knows his Delver is not going to be good. I think once you've already are on the line where you didn't do it in response to the counterbalance, it's gonna, it's a consistent line of play to not do it now, and yeah. it makes even more sense to me now because you know your Delver is just no good. Terminus is in the graveyard. That was his miracle for the turn. See Daniel setting aside search, but now he's going to cast Jace. Got to figure this will start. Well, you, you can brainstorm and try to lock some creature out. Between that and plus two-ing, fate sealing Tannin, those are both really inviting yeah. lines. If it's a plus two, that, that's really nice because then the bolt won't even do anything. Well, you're not really concerned about bolt because it's right. already so dicey going upstairs. Tannin brainstorms. In res it's a brainstorm from Jace. In response, Tannin tries to bolt the Jace, and a blind flip of counterbalance counters the lightning bolt. Yeah, that should seal this game up. And now T Daniel Miller gets three cards. Jace brainstorm will resolve. Ponder. He doesn't get to see the other one. So we'll see. Yeah, Entreat set up after that. Mm -hmm. In pretty short order, you'll be seeing that Entreat closing the game. Yeah, Tannen just uh, has one card in hand. Not really much that it could be that Miller has to worry about. Any potential threats just covered with that Jace bouncing it. He's not even setting up Entreat to Miracle at next turn. He's actually leaving that one on top. And just making a land drop says go. So there's no combination of cards that Tannen could have that would be lethal because drawing up, he needs second red source, two burn spells. Okay. I would have liked to have seen Miller just set up the entreat here. This was a pretty good window for it. Well, here's young Pyromancer from Tannen. That's not going to get countered by the one mana card on top. Daniel will draw. I suppose he can always just unsummon the Pyromancer, and that's what he'll do. Yeah. So Ryan Tanner could have made two creatures, but just chose to make one, right? He could have made Gurmag Angler there as well. Doesn't want to get Terminus a third time, I suppose. As long as you're forcing the Jace to bounce something, you're kind of managing the battlefield. Daniel casts Ponder, tops, keeps on top, draws, makes a land drop, and says go. I'm feeling that like we're going to see some angels this turn. Yes. Has enough to make lethal angels plus leave one up for a potential daze. Yeah. Young Pyromancer from Tannen. Without casting another creature, Tannen's also bluffing Spell Pierce, so you can maybe buy a little bit of time, but I think that Tannen is just dead if the entry presents itself. Land from Tannen, one card remaining. I believe it's Gurmag Angler. We'll see if he just wants to throw it down. And this will be the Angler, Delves, full seven. 
That one's not going to get hit by counterbalance. And you see no tries to even counter these with counterbalance from Daniel really suggests that Entreat's the top card. Well, Miracles doesn't really play sevens. No, he didn't try on the Pyromancer either. He, he, does, he does have twos, but yeah. Yeah, he should have tried to see if he has a seven. <laughs> There's Entreat the Angels. He's going, he's going for all of it? I guess, oh, yeah, Tana played his last card. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. That's making six. Emptying his wallet. <laughs> These angels will be more than enough to seal the game. Those are some good tokens. Look at all those things. <laughs> That's some style. Yeah, but we're, we're going to, they're actually, it makes angel tokens. We're going to use those. But it gets six angels. Jace will unsummon. Seems to me you may as well plus two on Tannen, but nothing is going to cause you to lose this game. Actually, Jace, yeah, will plus two. Top card is a true name nemesis. That's probably yeah. fine. Whatever. More creatures. You're dead. Game two, please. So Tana has a fetch land. So Ryan, do you ever do the maniac play where let's say Tana's top card was the one outer that beats you, and then do you ever just say leave it there and then get him to crack the fetch land? The only reason to do that is if you really dislike your opponent. And then when they look at the deck while like cracking the fetch land, they're like, what, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Why did you leave that there? You'd be like, I knew you'd crack it. If you it. really want to hurt a human being, <laughs> you will make plays like that <laughs> against them. <laughs> like what on earth would make you leave that card there? Yeah, I knew you were going to shuffle. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can keep that. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I've just I've just never done that in my life. I hear it talked about, but that's just lunacy. Swing with both. Daniel has extra angels to spare. Yeah, block, double block. Five five angels on the Gourmet Angler, one, one on the Fire Young Pyromancer. That that still works. Three on each. All right. Sure, I like sure. the split. That happens. I will order the blockers Angel, 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 and Angel, Angel, yeah. Angel. Okay, and that'll do 20. 20 power still survives. Daniel Miller takes game one over 10, and Grace looked for a bit there like he was not going to make it. These are dicey for a second. The counterbalance did a lot of work in sealing the game, and the Entreat yeah. just has so much closing speed. Even without Sensei's Divining Top, even without Miri's Guile. Even without Miri's Guile. Daniel Miller takes the first one. See whether or not things can get better for Tan. Whether Tannen can get a little more reach there post sideboard. We'll be back in just a couple minutes.
welcome back. So Tannen Grace, very close to getting the first game, but he falls to Daniel Miller. He's gonna look to his sideboard. Three copies of Cobalt Therapy, two Pyroblasts, two Surgical Extractions, and he's got some one -0s. A Braid, Ancient Grudge, dead, gone. Diabolic Edict, Dismember, Flusterstorm, Marsh Casualties, and Pithing Needle. So a lot of this stuff is just for other matchups, so the two Pyroblasts was really gonna shine in a matchup like this. You see, you see a lot of players reach for one Surgical Extraction because of Snapcaster Mage. It's not pretty, but it can do yeah. some work here. You can also reshuffle on some things when your opponent has their deck set up. Some number of Cabal Therapies are reasonable. Kind of think about the matchup, though, is that Miller's just setting up the top of his deck. You won't always have great windows for your therapies. I prefer counter spells in a matchup like this. The Pithing Needle's more for lands, but naming Jace the Mind Sculptor or as Cons of the Sunken Rune can be pretty meaningful in the matchup. Yeah, I was going to wonder about that, whether naming Jace works here for him. And a lot of times the Miracles player will board in something like Monastery Mentor. Does that, knowing that, will Tannen board in a way to deal with it? I mean, the stuff that you have on your sideboard that deals with it is all pretty bad in the matchup, and you already just want to leave in your Lightning Bolts. So okay. you probably just lock in those four bolts. That's your solution for Reach or it'll handle a Mentor. All right, on Daniel Miller's side. He's got a red element, elemental blast that you figure, and a pyroblast, which you figure those two are coming in. Mm -hmm. Of these other cards you see here, Disenchant, Flusterstorm, those two Monastery Mentors, his own Surgical Extraction, Back to Basics, Carpet of Flowers, Pithing Needle, Relic of Progenus, and Vidalkin Shackles. Do you like any of these? These are some wild cards. Definitely like the Mentors, but what is going on with this Carpet of Flowers? I mean, this, this card is a card you usually see Storm bring in against decks like Delver. It's yeah. really good in that match if you're just trying to get to a critical mass of mana. It's probably reasonable in the matchup. You know, you're never going to get dazed once you have a Carpet of Flowers. Do you want a Vidalkin Shackles here? Probably. Okay. It grabs pretty much everything. I'll, every, most of the threats in Tana's deck are grabbed very easily with the Shackles, and then you can get up to Gurmag Angle. You can get yeah. five islands on the battlefield, so that one's probably pretty good. I don't think that that's on Tana's graveyard gra radar, but it would be no. a, it would be a reason to have a Braid Post sideboard. Uh, last one, back to basics. Tana doesn't play any. Yep, that one's pretty good. It's generally four lands, but it certainly plays against Grixis Delver. All right, and presenting here. Ross Miriam actually with a blue moon does take game one over Peter Tubergen. He's actually our standard match. That's the one that's still in game one. The blue black control mirror of Felizetti and Decandio. Both of them probably just looking at hands full of fatal push or something. Nothing happening in the All game. All Scarab Gods got Vraska's contempted. Now we're just hanging out. Yeah, that one's going to be a slog. Yeah, it looks like a game Someone. ended. Someone. <laughs> we're going to result in a second here. And Ted Felicetti takes game one here in the control mirror. Two games to one for Miller, two back in Felicetti then. Remember, this is actually a pair down. The team of Miller, Tubergen, and Felicetti, they are five wins and a draw. Grace, Miriam, and DeCandio are five wins and a loss. Their loss coming all the way back in round one. Yeah. Kind of thing about having a draw on day one is you're almost never paired with people with the exact same number of match points as you. It's either down or up, and down's a lot closer. All right, Daniel Miller on a six-card hand, and here we go. Tan and Grace on the play. Looks like Miller's hand just kind of stack of lands and a ponder. Yeah, sure. This what? deck just has hands that are that. <laughs> <These> yeah. <laughs> they, the deck's a lot of things that redraw and lands. You want to have a good number of lands in these Wasteland Days matchups. And, yeah. Tannen leading on Ponder. Daniel's totally fine seeing that. Yeah. It's not a threat. It's better than, say, seeing a Delver. Yep. Things can get out of hand when Tannen has something like turn two young Pyromancer and can start to snowball value. Sure. Nice thing about Pyromancer is it commits multiple threats without just only investing one card. So you kind of force a Terminus if you're able to keep it around for a couple turns. And a predict from Daniel Miller. So he can start on Ponder. And if he times this one just right, he might even get a, some card advantage with Predict. Yeah, he can draw the card off Ponder, draw a card next turn, and then predict away the last one. So if he likes one and a half or two of these, pretty inviting line. So Ryan, I have an interesting one here. In these top three cards, there's a force of will. A lot of times, I don't see Miracles players keep that in post-board against Delver. 
Yeah, I, it's not particularly good the matchup. You have to two for one yourself. Kind of thing about it though, with predicts, with counterbalance, with terminus, you have enough things that swing card advantage in your way. Yeah. Making sure you keep things like true name nemesis off the battlefield, that can be worth two cards. So we see a Cataxian probe not only Daniel keeping Force of Will, he actively wants to draw it. His hand, two copies of Terminus, Force of Will, Predict, and two more lands. Yuck. Yeah. <laughs> the two Terminus, that, that is unfortunate. I was unfortunate. hoping to see Brainstorm. That's, I'm, that I'm sure everything. that Miller agrees with you. <laughs> is there, what specific card do you want a Force of Will in this matchup? Generally, it's going to be True Name Nemesis. If you're protecting Counterbalance, Force okay. of Will does it for zero mana. Uh, once you have Monastery Mentor on the battlefield, Force of Will is just a fine card to have. You fight yeah. over Lightning Bolt. Tannen draws off that Cataxian Probe. Looks like he's brought in Surgical Extraction for the matchup. And whoo, Cabal Therapy. Yeah, this one's probably going to get that Force of Will. Well, it's going to get two cards one way or the other. Yeah, do you want the two Terminus or do you want that Force Predict? Ooh, Let's him name Terminus. All right. Get the Terminuses. Now, with Terminus in the graveyard and Surgical in Tannen's hand, there's actually a really neat interaction if the last one gets Miracle. Yeah, so there's only one more in the deck, but if that shows up on top, Miracle Trigger, Surgical U, not happening. Yeah, so for all in purposes here, there are no Terminus in Daniel's deck, and Tannen gets to keep the Surgical. Not bad. Can still use that to yeah. fight over a Snapcaster Mage. Here we see Delver's Secret showing up. Delver, yeah, here from Tannen. Tannen, shy the second land still. Predict from Miller, and he's going to do that while the mana's down, and Tannen's going to daze it anyway. Daniel did know the top card of his deck. Portent. Cast Portent. And this was on, and was predicting on upkeep, then drew Portent for the turn. And I see why Miller wanted to predict this one away. Magic yeah. Tom Definitely Anderson, wants Brainstorm. Our important means he won't get to draw one of those cards until the beginning of next turn. Yeah. Though now that the Terminus have been hit by Cabal Therapy, what do you want shifts a little bit. He just wants to find cards that are singularly good. Brainstorm has a lot of redraws to them, but he kind of just wants to find Monastery Mentor, something that sets him up on the battlefield. He is ahead by a lot of land at the moment. Tan's Delver does not transform. Yeah, picked up a Wasteland for the turn. He'll swing in for one, Daniel to 19. Right, with this mana advantage, which he's really accrued from cards like Days, at some point, Tan you know, could just top deck a Jace and be out of this. But he is down a lot of cards. Looks like Tan has at least one Force of Will of his own. Yeah. See, Tannen has an interesting decision point here between just trying to get some mana on the battlefield, the underground sea, or just wastelanding. With Miller, with three lands on the battlefield going up to four, the wasteland's pretty inviting. Depending on what he has for spells, though, you do want to control a land. It looks like he chooses mana over wasteland. He makes underground sea. So for Daniel, we now see Brainstorm with a fetch land in play. This may be close to being worth fighting over. Tannen knows most of the hand. And he knows he can beat most of it. And yeah, he's going to force a will pitching Gitaxian Probe on that Brainstorm. It's aggressive, but I like it. Well, Miller's just left over with uh, force of will. And that is a draw three. Yeah. <laughs> if things stay generally equal, if Tannen can draw more answers, can keep Ooh. on line with this Delver, he's just ahead. And this Ponder on top will help him do it. So he draws for the turn. Mm -hmm. You know, the worry whenever I watch play against see people play against Miracles is that Something happens where just Daniel top decks a Swords to Plowshares. Swords the Delver and just says, yeah, cool. Yep. We're good. One thing about that, though, is that you wouldn't force a will the Swords. <laughs> it's just that's just too much material yeah. to give yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. You'll just find another threat inevitably. Ponder for Tannen. There's a, t there's a true name Nemesis in the top three, which is usually great in the matchup, but I'm curious if he'll keep it as he, he's a little light on resources to yeah. make that. Well, he knows he's through most of the Terminus. So if he can land that, it's just great. Yeah. Are there any Council's Judgment? Does the, if once we get through the Terminus, how does he deal with it? There is one Council's Judgment, and there is the Supreme Verdict in the deck as well. Okay. The True, ma true Name is not the be-all, end-all. It doubles the clock, though, which is very significant. Flooded Strand from Tannen, and then passes. So he's not really... He's hoping to build mana as opposed to Wastelanding. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, now that he has that true name nemesis, that makes a ton of sense. Also, sure. Miller is just online with a lot of lands. Okay. Wasteland doesn't really matter against these. These are all blue and white sources as well. You're not taking Miller off color. You're not really relevantly taking off him off of any kind of mana threshold. Like taking him off like an angel token, maybe? Yeah, Wasteland could matter, and this is one reason Miller finds Volcanic Island. Wasteland can Wasteland shut off that. some spells in the deck. Yeah, wait till he gets the Volcanic, then hit it. Yep, you also would sandbag it for something like Search for Ascantha, hitting Ascantha the Sunken Rune, which could be a real problem later. I like all of this. Yeah, Patience with Wasteland makes a lot of sense in this matchup. Tropical Island, fourth, all four colors online for Daniel Miller. He passes. I believe this is the first sign of the green splash that Tannen has seen. Yeah, you. So in the Dark Rhine, if you're playing a Grixis Delver deck and your Miracle's opponent turn eight of game two makes a Tropical Island, shortlist what what what's happening? I just, my uh, my brain says Ancient Grudge for some reason, but it's not good in the format. And he would okay. Yeah, normally you see it's like death rate shaman activation, but there's no way he plays that. Right, because it would be the green to cast shaman. There's no black mana still. Yeah. I would be kind of, I would be pretty confused, I think. Yeah, I'm just thinking, what is it, you know? Explore? I don't even, it's. Yeah, that, that, that's not that's it. That's not it. Yeah, if there's black mana, you might think, oh, like abrupt decay, mm -hmm. I guess. A yeah, green doesn't grudge. really even line you. It's, it, it's not like Legacy is the green-white spell format, you know? Yeah, this is a, it'd be really confusing. Here's young Pyromancer from Tannen, and he's going to get a hard cast Force of Will at it. Sure, that yeah. takes it down. I will tell you this much. I am more interested in wastelanding that volcanic island than the tropical island, yeah, even though I have <laughs> no idea what the tropical <laughs> island's going to cast. It's going to be Night of the Reliquary. Watch out. It's going get, to get big. Yeah. The collected company. <laughs> yeah. so Daniel's down to nine. Collected company and two Snapcaster how, how Mage. How many guesses would you need before you think you'd have naturally come up with Miri's Guile? I it would have I would have run out. Uh, okay, just would have, you would have I you just, would have conceded. I have had so many conversations about how unplayable Miri's Guile is that I would just never have guessed that card. <laughs> Here is Delver. Tannen fights with a Red Elemental Blast. Miller asks if Tannen wants to Red Blast his own Delver. Tannen declines. No, I'll pick your counter spell. Yeah. But thank you. That's the better target, I think. Says go. And he still has two cards left. Looks like he can fight over that Terminus if he needs to. And like you said, not doesn't know what the Green Man's for, but whatever. He'll go ahead and take care of the Volcanic yeah. Island. Your Tropical Island confuses me, but it does not scare me. And now he's going to Surgical the Terminus. Is there a reason to do that now as opposed to in, when it's Miracled? I guess with the Miracle Trigger, oh wait, the Miracle Trigger, it's already in your hand, is it not? Yeah, but Surgical gets something out of yeah, your hand. Yeah, it gets it out of your hand, yeah, so it does not make sense. That's one of those, the, 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 the minutia of the rules of how Miracle works, is it's not straightforward. Correct. It's like, oh yes, the card is in your hand, but there's a yeah. cast, a trigger on the stack. <laughs> the interaction is better because the Terminus is already in your hand. Yeah, yeah. it's at you, <laughs> right. I think one reason to do this is that you guarantee that you get to see Miller's deck. Okay, I like that. <laughs> He's drawing very slim and might concede if you wait. So you get to get your surgical in, and you're probably going to win anyway. What a weird... Yeah. I like Miracle. Like, as a mechanic, it plays pretty well, but the rules behind it are a mess. Tannen's like, all right, I have no idea what that Tropical Island is for, so I want to make sure that my surgical extraction resolves so I get to see whatever you're up to. Were the Miri's Guiles still in there? Did he get to see? I, I did not see. I didn't see him. Maybe so he'll never know. Yeah. <laughs> What are you doing? Why? Why is mm, non-basic island, huh? And I'd be like, is there some hate card out of the board? <laughs> no, he's like, like, what's going on? Is it Jace words yeah. of wilding? Is that, <laughs> is that the combination? All right, Swords of Plowshares takes care of the transformed Delver of Secrets, leaving town with just a one-one. He will not flip it, but he'll hit Daniel down to eight. Sorge plus no flip was pretty bad for Tannen. Another Delver. So now, with a Lightning Bolt in hand and two Delvers in play, Tannen's very close to having lethal damage. Yeah, transform those and that's it. He said, there's no like EE, was there one? Engine Explosives in Daniel's deck. Something that can hit both these right out. Not Explosives, it's just the, 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 the Supreme Verdict he's still drawing okay. to. Okay. 
and treat the Angels covers both. Get two blockers. So over on the standard table, Brennan DeCandio ties things up with Ted Felicetti. No match results are finished just yet. 15 minutes left in the round. This one's going to come down to the wire. Oh, yeah. I, this one's almost assuredly going to yeah. game three. Fetch line for Daniel and a counterbalance. Okay. In response, Tan's just going to bolt him. Love it. Daniel's at five. Now Tan says, I have five. Spell on top of my deck, you're dead. Yep. Any ESN or sorcery does it. Let's see. That's a nope. Gourmet Angler. Nope. nope. Not yet. It is a seven. <laughs> Here's a swing. You're at Daniel's at three. He can't counterbalance that. He knows about the Supreme Verdict, though. I so, imagine you don't Kent Tannen it, won't cast. Yeah, you don't wanna, you're, you're still losing to the same card? Yep. And also, the thing about it is it, if it's another Delver, it's a weird situation. It's where not like Counterbalance is going to counter the Angler next turn. Exactly. If it's a one-mana threat, you're way more concerned about it being countered. The Angler is just going to be good. Maybe Daniel has a seven. Maybe he has a Commandeer. <laughs> and he flips it. What are some green seven mana cards he could have? <laughs> Here's Vidalkin Shackles from Miller. Okay. That that might matter. It's a green. <laughs> I was going to say Gaia's Revenge, but you can't shackle that. So some green sense. Here's Cabal Therapy. Ugh. I mean, it transforms into Delvers, but that's not a good draw. Yeah, what, what green seven of miracles play? <laughs> Simic Sky Gr Swallower. Garuk's Gr Gr Horde. <laughs> Just gonna, no one ever sees that one coming. You got true nemesis. I Gr have Gr Simic Sky Swallower. <laughs> it's twice as big and it flies. In the green primordial seven, right? <laughs> yeah. It got cost double green. Oh, okay. Oh, you know, a single, like a splashable green seven. Yeah, splashable green seven. Colonian Twin Grove is only six, right? <laughs> Here's a pair of trees. Yeah. <laughs> well, he steals one of the insectile aberrations, so. Not ideal. Not ideal. The line for Tannen here is just to jam the angler, hope that Miller bricks. Yeah. Then next turn, you have two lethal attackers. You can't attack here. No, you don't want to trade them. That's really bad. That's not how you beat Vidalkin Shack. No. I know that one. Yeah. Because then they'll just take something else. Yep. And you're still just fading the same things. You're in a lot of trouble, I suppose, if Miller produces swords to plowshares if you cast the angler. But not mm -hmm. casting the angler just outright loses the game. 4 PM sealed. So he'll cast. In the 4 PM sealed. Your next round pairings have been posted. Peter Tubergen takes game two, so we have a bunch of game threes on the way now. That's over on the modern table. Untap, Ken, Daniel, I think that answer. was a land. Actually, need to correct ourselves here. Peter did not win, Ross wins. That's 2-0, so that's one in the four, the team of Grace, Miriam and DeCandio. I'm anticipating a lethal attack here. Yeah. You might show some concern about Snapcaster Mage, but you're not beating it, so just jam. Asks Ross, hey, what's up? Can I swing? Should I swing? Swings both. Game three. Tannen evens it up. So both Tannen and DeCandio lose their game ones. They win game two. And with just 11.20 remaining, it's going to be a quick sideboard. We'll be back in just a minute. Oh, still shuffling here. Ten minutes remaining. That is the accurate clock right here. You see teammate Ross Miriam. He's looking over on the Brennan DeCandio match. He knows if this team gets that one, Magic they're good. Player, so may as well start there. The Ross stage. with Blue Moon Solid did Green. win his. Ross stage. also generally is going to play more standard than Legacy. <laughs> so his power is more useful in the I standard match. I never watch my Legacy teammates because I figure I'll just mess them up. Even if you play a lot of Legacy, I'll still there's mess them so up. many subtle things that happen in games. If I wasn't watching the game since turn one, then I'm not qualified to talk. Yeah, on which turns did they brainstorm? What were your reads before the brainstorm? What were your reads after the brainstorm? Yeah. Which card, did, how many cards did they draw off the ponder before they shuffled? All right, and this is why you gotta play Mono Red Sneak Attack. None of these questions matter. Yeah, did you Blood Moon them? Did they lose? <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, I'll play my match. Did it work? No. Dang. <laughs> well, we'll get him next time. Four 
I think you should blood moon in, blood moon in this game. <laughs> Trinisphere, cast that one. Kaza, yeah. Trinisphere is strong. Did he, did he play more cards after that? <laughs> Do they have an artifact? Fiery Confluence. Pick, blow up pick two other modes. You can damage them, you could do one to the creatures, I don't so, care. So whatever stuff they have, pick the modes that kill their stuff. Blow up the stuff. And eight minutes remaining, is, this will be a hard one for Daniel Miller to win. Yes, and it's not even an easy one for Tannen to close. Yeah, he has pressure. Grixis Stelvar has a lot of pressure, but it doesn't actually have a lot of speed. And Miracles has a lot of speed bumps. Yeah. Swords to Plowshare is really slow. They, they stick down. around for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel on a mulligan. Yeah, Miracles really good at earning draws. Looks like Tannen on a mulligan as well. Seems to be the situation. If neither match finishes, that's good for Tannen's team as well. Yeah. That'd be strange. That's that would usually be strange. Not what happens? Yeah, two incomplete matches with one. <laughs> quite, a, quite a mess. Yeah, that, that's weird. Remember, Ross Miriam's team already with one loss. Other team with a draw. A similar, though different. Yeah, I mean, for making day two, they're likely the same. But once we get into day two, those are very different records. Yes. Six cards each. For Dan and Grace and Daniel Miller here. And looks like resolving scries, so we are setting it up. 645. Can they get a game done in that? It's gonna have to be a quick one. Yeah, it looks, looks like Miller chose a scry to the top. And he'll start out with a ponder. I was, it's always that feeling when you scry and your first, all your lands in hand are fetch lands and you're on the play. I think, man, do I? It's one of the scenarios where I really like playing the Street Wraith decks where you scry. Oh, well, that's cheating. I'm going to draw that one, shuffle. That's why I just play decks that don't have fetch lands. <laughs> <laughs> it never happens. Yeah, that's another way to do it. Like, I don't, I don't play those. It also means that I lose to Blood Moon because I don't have fetch lands. Yeah, that, that is a problem. Like, go get your basic. How? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I even register it? <laughs> you know, you have to register like seven and then you're okay. <laughs> it's horrible. Tannen starts turning one Deathrite Shaman. Team open competitor Land, fetch lands and graveyards for both players. And you see a handshake. Brennan to Candio taking the blue black control match. They're going to reveal hands and then do that thing where you talk about who might have won. And because yeah. they're both legacy blue decks, no one has any clue. They're going to look at six cards and determine who 30 turns later were just scraped across for the last big interaction and points of damage. Yeah, but a well fought two games for Daniel Miller and Tan and Grace. And they're going to leave it at one apiece. 